comments on radio shows about the Divas Division. You're reading these negative reviews on forums and websites and columns from columnists who've been doing it for a number of years, who I have a lot of respect for, because they see the same issue that I see with the Divas Division. The underlying issue with the Divas Division is you have a Divas champion who's dominated for over a year and matches with Caitlin and Natalia. Not saying they haven't been great matches, because they have been. You've had the same Divas champion who's consistently been dominating in the division, and the same four or five number one contenders jockeying for position for the Divas Championship, and neither one of those five potential contenders for the Divas Championship are even near a position to take away that championship from AJ. AJ has had the Divas Division revolve around her for the past number of months, so I can understand why she claiming that she's the queen of the Divas Division has some legitimacy attached to it, because it is a legitimate claim for how much she's dominated for pretty close to a year. She's the CM Punk of the Divas Division, in my opinion. But if we had more challengers and different challengers like Paige and Emma going up for the Divas Championship, fans wouldn't be saying what they've been saying for the past six months about the Divas Division. Yes, Emma has a long way to go, but I think that a submission specialist like Emma shouldn't be held down as much as much she's been held down for the past three or four months. She's showing up in the crowd with signs for superstars like Bandango and Santina Morella. She's got this valet thing going on uh, with Santina Morella. Really not too struck on that. And I'm really not a fan of her dancing because Kelly Kelly was brought into the WWE the same way as a dancer and exhibitionist on ECW. She continued the exposés on editions of ECW and Raw and SmackDown for a number of months and transisted from a valet of people like Mike Knox and CM Punk into a full-time in-ring competitor. It took her years to do that, and I'm hoping we don't see the same thing for Emma. It seems as if we're not going to see the same thing because she's dancing and wrestling at the same time. I'm really not a big fan of divas who come in and just resort to dancing. I'm tired of seeing the Stacey Keeblers of the world showing up in the WWE. I'd much rather see them focusing on Emma's wrestling ability because she is a fantastic wrestler, and she's one of those marketable wrestlers who can easily be Divas Champion for the equivalent amount of time of six months. She can be a longer reigning Divas Champion than someone like AJ with how good she is. If you've never seen the Emma Lock utilized in matches, that is a deadly submission hole which should be having more exposure on editions of Raw and SmackDown. It's beyond me why she hasn't locked Summer Rae in the Emma Lock on Raw more often than what we have seen her lock Summer Rae in that hole in matches on Raw and in just segments. I'm Monday Night Raw. I'd rather see the Emma Lock than some things that happen in the Divas Division. If you've never seen the Emma Lock applied, you're going to have to watch that match between Summer Rae and Emma from a recent edition of Monday Night Raw. It happened about two weeks ago. Emma got the Emma Lock on Summer Rae Carter with the hold, and she won the match as a result of the hold. If you've never seen it applied on either Raw, SmackDown, or NXT, you have to watch a match where she uses that hold because it's just as impressive as AJ's Black Widow. And I'm going to put Emma over consistently for the utilization of that that hole because how many technically skilled women do you see in the Divas Division? Not very many. There was Natalia, AJ with the Black Widow, and she wasn't always using the Black Widow. She used it under a different name, but that wasn't her trademark move. She did some kind of flip, some kind of flapjack as her finishing move for a number of months when she debuted on Raw and SmackDown and was scatteredly wrestling on editions of Superstars. She wasn't always a submission specialist. I believe she called the move its original name the Octopus. It was months before AJ started using that that move as her finisher, but when she adapted from a singles competitor who got wins by pinfall into a diva who got wins by a submission, uh, it was a great transition for her to make, and Emma has not uh, resorted to winning matches by pinfall. She's immediately come in as a wrestler who wins matches by submission, and that is something you really have to appreciate. I appreciate her ring attire. I appreciate everything about her, but there are just a few things that really gets on my nerves about Emma. The fact that she's a dancer and she's not wrestling as much as she should be are two of the critical issues that I have with Emma, two of the underlying issues that I have with her character. And I want to know what are some of the issues you have with Emma's character. Do you, are you just as frustrated as what I am with the direction of Emma's character? And would you like to be seeing her used more on editions of Raw and SmackDown and NXT as a wrestler? You can tell me what your thoughts are on the distribution of Emma's character at the bottom of this YouTube video at Jonathan Clark 22 and on our Twitter at Jonathan Clark 1. You can send me a tweet with a hashtag and you can leave me your comments on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Entertainment on our wall or by sending me a message. Let me know what you think of the direction of Emma's character as she joins 
our array of divas we have discussed over the past few weeks. And over the past few weeks, we have talked about everyone from Paige to Charlotte to Sasha Banks. We have been giving them the benefit of the doubt. And I think that all of these divas we've been talking about over the past number of weeks on this radio show for our video blogs on YouTube and our audio archives in our radio form on our website, they are going to be a force to be reckoned with in the divas division. And I thought there was a time when the divas division wasn't going to get out of this rut that it was caught up within following the releases of divas like Kelly Kelly, Eve, and of course Melina, who were fantastic uh, wrestlers, especially Kelly Kelly with how far she came. I never thought the Divas division would get out of this precarious position, but then I saw the Divas that were being distributed on NXT as upstarts in the Divas division, and I said, this is what the Divas division has been waiting for, and this is what it has needed for so long. It needs this to get it out of its rut, and sooner enough, the Divas division on NXT is going to get call-ups to Raw and SmackDown, and they're going to benefit the Divas division because we're going to get those positive reviews from radio shows and columnists. The Divas who have deserved opportunities at the Divas Championship for forever are finally going to be given those opportunities to challenge for the championship, no matter who they go up against in a Divas Championship match, whether it be AJ, Natalia, one of the Bella Twins, I don't care. I just want to see them get the opportunities they work diligently to achieve in their careers. If you can give that opportunity to AJ and have her capitalize on that and push AJ as much as what you have over the past six months, there's no reason why you can't push someone like uh, Emma, Charlotte, or Paige in that same direction. And I just hate how WWE have been consistently putting this off week after week after week. So that's why I'm opening up this radio show as a forum for you this week to tell me what your frustrations are with the Divas Division and a frustration that you have with a diva like Emma. It couldn't, it might not even be Emma. You have your frustration with. It could be someone like Charlotte. It could be someone like Daly. Let your frustrations out on the bottom of this YouTube video at Jonathan Clark 22 on our Facebook page at HGW Entertainment on our Twitter at Jonathan Clark 1 with a tweet and a hashtag that is creative. I really appreciate those. Let me know what you're feeling about the Divas Division and what it can be done to have it bettered in the years to come. I think wrestling fans should be paying more attention to the Divas Division, but again, it goes back to how much consistency we have seen develop in the Divas Division for the past at least six months, the same four or five contenders and the same champion dominating for pretty close to a year. I referred to AJ earlier in the show as the CM Punk of the Divas Division and WWE's excuse for a CM Punk in the Divas Division and having her as Raw General Manager and working with talents like CM Punk really didn't benefit her at all. It made her one of the most unpredictable Divas in the WWE and you think they would have carried that over to the Divas Division, but she's just doing the same pathetic thing every week if she's not wrestling against the same four or five divas to promote total divas she's coming out and doing a promo that is really doing no justice to her character if anything it's going to contribute to her eventual release from the company because there's going to be nothing creative left for aj's character to do and i really don't want to see it come to that point for aj because she's been a great divas champion there's just been a little bit too much emphasis on aj's dominance in the divas division and referring to her as a queen of the divas division when you've had wrestlers like alundra blaze and the fabulous moolah who established women's wrestling in the WWE. If anything, the queen of the Divas Division should have been the fabulous Moolah, the queen of women's wrestling for how long she held the women's title. For over 20 years, she had a reign as women's champion. So if anyone is the prestigious queen of the Divas Division and women's wrestling, you would expect it to be the fabulous Moolah, not someone like AJ, who's just been wrestling the same four or five Divas all the time. And I really hope that WWE realize that and give the same opportunity they've given to AJ to someone like Emma, who really deserves it. And again, if you haven't seen Emma in action, YouTube some NXT matches of hers, YouTube some episodes of NXT, and watch the series on WWE.com and the WWE Network. It is an opportunity you can't pass up. Anytime Emma is in action, whether it be on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, or the WWE Network on YouTube, wherever, take that opportunity. You will not regret it, and get back to me with your opinion, because I want to know where your frustrations lie with the Divas Division. Are some of your frustrations the same as mine? Are you feeling just as frustrated over some issues with the division as one I am, or are there other issues that I've kind of overshadowed and overlooked with the division that you want to raise? You can contribute your thoughts at the bottom of this YouTube video in our comments at JonathanClark22, on Twitter at JonathanClark1, and on our Facebook page with over 1,000 fans 
at HGW Entertainment. Don't forget to download our tool bar and sign up for our discussion forum on our website. Once you register an account, you can join the discussion about anything you find on this website or here on this radio program, and you can now get access to our YouTube video stream and podcast format from websites like Podnova. Once you sign up for an account on Podnova, you'll get access to our entire YouTube video stream now available for you in podcast format. And give me your feedback and thoughts on anything we've talked about and archived in recent weeks on our YouTube channel. It can be something about the Divas Division, Divas like Sasha Banks, Paige, Summer Rae, Charlotte, whoever, or something like the main event for WrestleMania 30, Randy Orton and Dave Batista. Whatever you like on our YouTube channel, we invite you to contribute your comments and your thoughts. It is much appreciated, and we will see you next week when I once again talk about something critical happening in the world of professional wrestling or entertainment. And when we come back from this brief commercial break, I'll have a retro song from Demi Lovato, a song that was produced for the Princess Protection Disney Channel original movie, which was released in 2009-2010. Two Worlds Collide off of one of Demi Lovato's retro albums, which was released a number of years ago. I'll have that for you when we come back. 